Hey everybody and welcome to another Ascension Messages. This is Bobby Richardson. I have an amazing person that we are going to chat backwards and forwards about some pretty crazy stuff for the potential of humanity and where this can really lead us. So his name is Peter. Welcome, Peter. Uh, hi there, Bobby. Uh, it's great to be on. Yeah. Uh, I just want to be clear. I'm, I'm not an expert in anything in particular. I just have a lot of uh, interest in some of the areas surrounded with what Bobby's going to talk about. And uh, I guess she asked me on just so that I could bounce a few ideas back and forth with her and yeah, see where this things go. Like yeah. It's going to be one of those impromptu chats, eh? And we're just going to we're just going to flow with wherever it kind of goes. But we do have some specifics that we want to tap on, which is the pineal gland, the potential of humanity, um, light fractions, I suppose you call it. I don't know. You're going to have all the technical words. See, I, I just get led by my guides to specific information, and I follow the path. But also, we were talking about that you, the UFO thing that we saw um, from, I think it was ancient aliens as well, that was on there where a man shot a piece of a UFO and it turned into a solid form from a light orb that was just a light orb, which is kind of in a backwards way of where we're going to with this whole light turning into material, material turning into light, right? He literally yeah. saw a light orb and he shot at it. And the first documentary I saw on the thing, they, they said it turned into carbon. This was years before the one that I shared with you, Peter. And then, so I had it in my brain, it was carbon. But it wasn't carbon, was it? It was a lot more than carbon. Yeah, no, what they said in the documentary, when I went back and watched it, was it was an aluminum alloy. And they said that uh, it had... Uh, certain trace elements as well as a non-earthly isotopic ratio of strontium 87 to 88 I think was what they said um, and what I found interesting about it was I follow another YouTube channel which is called the uh, Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project and they do a lot of research about relating to ball lightning as well as other stuff and uh, in there he's done a fair bit of research where he talks about how Basically, when you have this ball lightning, it uh, it creates sort of like, you, there's another group that also does it, but I can't remember the name, but anyways, um, it's kind of a, 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 sh a shield of coherent energy around it, where it's kind of like a Bose-Einstein condensate, which means that like all of the energy that goes into that shell around the ball lightning behaves as one particle but it has a lot of energy trapped in it. So for example, um, it can have like the energy equivalent to the mass of, you know, billions of particles trapped in this energy sheath around the ball lightning. And what will happen is when that energy comes out of the ball lightning, it has to reform into matter because it's basically coming from a coherent state where it's behaving as one part, quote unquote particle. I don't really know what the particle would be that it's behaving as, but it comes out and it reforms into matter. And as it reforms into matter, it extracts ambient energy from the environment to, it can, it can require to like take heat energy out of the environment or things like that to turn back into matter. But as it comes back into matter, it forms into these uh, elements, which are um, composed, they tend to be composed, like they're related to the energy that's in the ball lightning. So I think the wavelength of energy that's in there also affects what comes out. Mm -hmm. And also the ambient environment that it's reforming into can affect what it forms into. But they typically, all other things being equal, will turn into what I think uh, Bob Greenier from the MF MFMP says are uh, alpha conjugate nuclei, which are basically, if you have an alpha particle, which is like a helium atom, which is, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna mix this up because I'm not actually <laughs> an expert on it, but it's like I think it's two uh, two protons and two neutrons. So when it comes out, you tend to get these elements that are basically groupings of those two proton two protons and two neutrons. So you get a lot of carbon, and for some reason, I think you'll get a lot of aluminum, and you'll get a lot of calcium and like uh, things like those. And anyways, it was interesting to me that they did get. Um, aluminum in the metal that they found from the sample. 
And the other thing was they talked about this non-isotropic, this non-earthly isotropic ratio in the aluminum. And um, that's also something very typical that will happen because I think when the earth is, the earth was formed, <laughs> it's kind of like there were um, a lot of different electrical reactions happening. And even later in, in time, you'll find these mineral deposits in the earth where certain things have happened. And I think that quite often the geology of a specific area is the result of a highly energetic nuclear kind of reaction or electric reaction with this coherent matter that mm -hmm. then deposits stuff in. And the way it deposits it in will be, so you'll have this energy, energy that comes out of this coherent state and results in material coming out and all the material in that area will have that specific type of signature. Yeah. And uh, I'm kind of losing where I was going with this, but. Uh, it kind of, when you're, as you're talking, like I'm being showed almost a very simplistic thing of flatland from Dr. Fred Allen Wolf, he had like somebody would poke a finger from a 3D world into a 2D flatland and, and they would see something different form. So if it's, but if, if we're talking frequency, right, we're talking a faster mm. frequency that is, is uh, residing in light, but still holds all of the uh, makeup um, particles that uh, will form as, uh, as that material that it was in its original state in the in the higher frequency so yeah if it's like, I think you're right it's like yeah. it is that original state of that and then as it's coming into a lower frequency which is earth and um in our in our um reality it shot it starts off as a ball of light but um it's like that finger coming into the into the reality and then uh when it when it ends up becoming a lower frequency with the same frequency of earth, it ends up materializing back into the same form as what it was uh, from right. a higher frequency. That makes sense. It's yeah. kind of what I'm taught, what, where I'm going with the potential of humanity and the information that I got with our pineal gland and us literally yeah. uh, shifting into light ourselves to be able to go into these other frequencies and connect yeah. with these other beings. And then, awesome. yeah. Right. I, I, mean, I did just remember what I was. I was so yeah. the thing I was going to say was that the non-earthly isotopic ratio, I think is what the effect is basically is that you have this higher dimensional energy that's coming in and that the way it re-manifests in the material is that the isotopic ratio is different because it's more, basically what the MFMP Bob Greener always says is he says that that matter wants to densify. It wants to get into a densest state as possible because that is like the lowest energy state. It's kind of like when you're annealing a metal or something and you're trying to get it crystallized into like the most dense, lowest energy state. And that when yeah, you do these coherent yeah. matter... Sorry, we're in the material world, right? So in that yeah. material world, we want to be separated from everything. When we're in a higher frequency, there's more flux and what can be created through light, light um, protruding and then manifesting into a material yeah. world. Flux, like it can come and it can go in that higher frequency. And this frequency, it is what it is. Um, because that is the program of this frequency where it's, it, like you said, it just wants to stay in the energy. Yep. And it, it does remind me of what my four-year-old daughter said about the Anion experience where she said, I know where we go when we die. It's a place called Anion, but we live in our minds now, mommy, but we also live in Anion as well. It's where everything is everything. And they just said to, to thank her um, for giving her that information. I can look it up. And Anion was a particle at, in quantum physics that resided in it could flip from boson to fermion. It could go. It could go either way. Yeah. And apparently, it creates a journey in that in that experience that it mem memorizes. It mem has a memory of it. So it's almost like that flip yeah. of of it coming of light from a, a different frequency coming into becoming material. Can, has a memory already programmed into it through the annual yeah. state that brings it back into that form that it originally started from that was created. But it can only yeah. be really think, manipulated when you're in the higher frequencies, right? 
It can, yeah. it can be, you can shift and change it with your yeah. thought patterns in those higher frequencies. But when you're in this frequency, it's a lot more denser. We literally have to lift ourselves out of it to, to be yeah. able to minimize. No, there's, a, there's a lot of interesting stuff you've said that brings back memories of, um, I think it was Nassim Haraman or something like that, I think his name is. And he was, he always, I think I saw a video of him once where he was talking about how in the, I don't know if it was the nucleus of, uh, a proton or something like that. It was some elementary particle where they basically calculated that it was something to do with the, the Planck length, which is the smallest indivisible length that can exist in something, you know, uh, subatomic particles. And what he was saying was he was saying that somehow you could geometrically compute the, the number of tiny spheres that would fit inside the Planck length of some subatomic elementary particle was equivalent to the number of atoms that would exist in the universe. And I find it very interesting because it's kind of like, you always hear about these metaphysical people talking about how um, if you go within, you know, there is a connection to everything and that that is what like the oneness is. Yeah. Um, so, which is, it brings yeah. that spark, that, um, what is it called? A similar, similar, I'm terrible with these words. Oh, similar, you know, similar luminescence. Luminescence. Yeah, so no, which yeah, is, yeah. to me, the it, almost like uh, watching uh, creation, it's a star, a, another creation burst into, into yep. and I do believe that's what happens within our pineal gland with, because they showed me that melatonin, uh, well, serotonin, which is the light that brings us, you know, with the day and the happy drug and that. Um, yep. And then that sh that shifts into melatonin, which is the sleep cycle and the dark needs to be uh, there. Then they said yielded with a beta carotene um, creates DMT. And the DMT drug is... Um, with our pineal gland, and this is only when you come from a balanced mind, you cannot enter this pineal gland unless you have yeah, known how to center your mind to begin with. So that's that's the big key, kahoodle. You can't enter it otherwise. Um, then those those tiny little micros that are in the, in the pineal gland act like what we're talking about because of this flush of DMT going through it, it literally becomes those sumina luminescences or anion particle kind of fractions okay. and um uh, but they're all in a somatic pattern and those somatic patterns are the the codes to connecting to these other benevolent beings who are literally putting it on our earth as our code here here's our phone number guys there's a crop circle right so yep. here we are with the crop circles and the ability now to be able to, to tune into ourselves through balanced minds. And, and also with the help of Earth, they, they kept showing me caves that Gaia herself literally created for humanity to be able to tap in. And it, what it did was bring the harmony that of our voice into the cave would, would resonate to a point where it could connect with us uh, and give us more information through her as a being and, and uh, her wisdom. It was, there's just so much to explore with this. That's really fascinating that the, the caves and stuff, because you always, I, I've always heard like about how, you know, during sort of dark periods in humanity, there would be people who would supposedly live, I, I have no idea whether it's true or not, it's probably not true, but you know, they would live underground for prolonged periods of time. And, and you know, and you often hear about sort of, and you often hear about these occult sort of uh, groups, like the ones that came out of Afghanistan, like the really old sort of occult groups, not the, not the negative ones so much, just like the, um, I don't know what you would call, but like the kind of buried history of, of occultism that exists and like, and, you know, most of those places are deep underground, allegedly, in that sort of area in the Middle East, right? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, I don't know how, yeah. They had, like, they they were very white and featured. They were kept in the dark as as the seers of the tribe. Oh, wow. And then, and then they wouldn't be allowed to come out into light because they would constantly be using their third eye and tripping up the dip 
what is it the dmt i know there's a long ah uh, yes yeah yeah I mean, I'm, heard, I, I'm not educated at all i've, so I've heard mean, things to me about, <laughs> yeah no no what you're saying makes perfect sense because i there's a there's this fellow i follow on youtube called aubrey marcus and he um always touts this thing which he calls the darkness retreat which is basically where you go there you put on a blindfold you're in a pitch black room and they bring you food every day and you stay there for like a week or a month or however long it takes until you say i'm ready to go and he says like after two or three days you know he would be having basically the equivalent of a continuous dmt trip and and like you know and you, you work through your 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 problems basically is what he said yeah. is what it's about right but and then like you're saying also with these um like a lot of these rituals initiation rituals for these um ancient occult traditions it seems like quite often they involved taking I, I can't remember where i heard this precisely it might have been on the Gigi young uh youtube channel but she basically she talks about how uh they would take these people into dark rooms and keep them there for or maybe it was the aubrey marcus they keep them there for a month on end mm. as part of initiating them into mm. whatever and, and it's and they would only be able to tap into what they needed to clear until they had that centered mind so that they can literally, then they can use the pineal gland for what it's really used for, which is uh, interdimensional telepathic communication, yes, uh, yeah. gaining wisdom, also being able to uh, astral travel through it into these different vortexes and literally meet these beings um, to be able to like even if you take a dmt yeah. trip so many people say i met these little beings and lots of them they say elves elves which is really interesting because when i had connection with an elemental that came to me um i had a kind of an elven figure as well before that so it, it's like they're the gateways of earth and gaia and her wisdom holding holding information here we are on earth and that's the first thing you would really want to tap into yep. is the yep. wisdom that we can use that's literally in front of our eyes right um and as for the other beings they're just here to guide us back to that wisdom to teach us how to use this again you know this this amazing potential that humanity has that's just been hidden from us you know even the the pope right the yeah. Pope was like, well, only certain people can have visions. I'm sorry, but yeah, <laughs> I've yeah. had visions all my life. I've seen interdimensional all my life. You cannot turn around and shut that off me because it is me. And I know I feel for all those people who have been put in insane asylums for something that they literally have been gifted with in years gone by. But now is the time yeah. we're stepping forward and, and uh, taking the reins back to getting this information and and we need the scientific side of it as well and that's why I, I love talking to you yeah. Peter, because you have all those little bits I've just been guided with my guides they're like look at that look at that look at that and I don't read the whole thing I literally just read the sentence that they tell me so my my knowledge is is vast but limited in such a way I, 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 have, a, I have a question for you bobby about specifically about like these types of psychedelics and dmt and stuff i've noticed an uptick maybe it hasn't, it's not an uptick maybe it was always there but there's definitely a strong financial agenda to kind of promote psychedelics and stuff by um very wealth, wealthy power elite so like there are foundations to basically legalize DMT. Um, I think even George, I, I could be wrong about this, so I'd have to check it, but I think George Soros actually funds the sort of legalization of DMT and other stuff. And what, what my concern is that um, a lot of people are taking these psychedelics in an effort to connect to that oneness, right? But like you've said, you don't get to go to that oneness when you do it through a natural means, unless you've dealt with all your stuff first, right? Mm -hmm. And my my concern is like um, that people who haven't, like I, I haven't dealt with all my stuff, so I would never go and take a DMT. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do it with it yet at well, least, you, right? You, but Well, you would end up going through clearing that first. 
So is that, that's how you, you would, okay. Yeah, so you would take the DMT, the ayahuasca or whatever it was, and the trip will literally be prepping you to be able to do, you know, go into these other places right. eventually. Um, but you will always be taken to what needs to be rebalanced first within your mind. What what are you, are you allowing your logic and your intuition to work together like, well? And, and that's, they showed me through the vision quest that I went on because I was in the tent with the warring zone coming both sides of me. And then yep. I saw a cave representing the pineal gland. And the first thing that happened is that the elder was just going to shoot me dead because I come from the warring zone. So right. but, but what they will do that DMT will do is like literally bring you to the, to the um, imbalance first. Where yes, exactly. Imbalance? Yep. Um, and what are you uh, not accepting of yourself fully? to be able yeah. to, to go into these different spaces. I, I had a, a specific code that allowed me to go through even from a warring zone because that's who I am, but but no yeah. no other human being would be allowed to go okay. into those other uh, other yeah. realms because they, they it's it's a safe haven not to mess up the different the, the higher frequencies and bring a warring zone. Like it will just yes. make oh, yes. that war that higher frequency will fall onto this frequency and we won't have that anymore to be able to reach yeah. as our soul yeah. evolves into something better right and we need yeah. always that reach this is training ground and i right. tonight at eight o'clock I, 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 yeah well actually i'll probably by the time this goes up i would have had um a premiered my last talk which actually was a channel message on this subject yeah okay yeah like i think that um like what you're talking about people need to work through their stuff uh, to, to really figure it out what I'm, what I, my kind of concern about it just generally, like, it's not really, a, it, it is a concern, but it's just like, I'm kind of worried that, um, people aren't going to have the, dis they may not yet have the discernment to really realize what they're being presented with when they go on these trips. Mm. Um, and if they don't the have it, <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So basically, they're going to get some sort of divergent energy or some sort of entity is going to present themselves to them. And then it may tell them that they're, they're on the quest to, you know, do something wonderful. And it may actually be just something that's trying to appeal to their ego. And they may, they, they may have to work through that first. Yeah, before, it would but, but they will eventually. But it's just yeah. like, I wonder why I just, I, it's, it's a curiosity. It's just like, I wonder why there's a lot of money trying to promote psychedelics and these things like it kind of makes me wonder if they are kind of like you always hear about during the period of judgment or whatever we're in or the whatever this period is where basically you're going to need to properly discern what's happening and how to move forward to whatever's whatever's happening to humanity right and it's kind of like i i kind of believe in my mind that that the realities are going to start fracturing in a way Mm -hmm. And that you always hear about UFOs that come back and like these gray aliens and how maybe they're, you know, from the future and they're actually a divergent pathway of humans who need to come back to sort of um, right the wrong or, or put humanity on the correct track or whatever. And it's kind of like, I, I just wonder whether that because the realities are all kind of fracturing in this way, whether the... Uh, the yeah. encouragement of the psychedelics is to open people up to all the possibilities yeah. and then some of the people will will walk on the centered path of, of kind of resolve the issues that they need to resolve and whatever but other people may decide oh I actually like this this crazy thing that's being presented to me of a future where humanity is totally embroiled in technology and and yeah. totally mentally connected in a hive mind and i actually want to experience that so yeah. i'm going to go down that route and i kind of wonder how much of the um the the promotion of things to like open up people's minds through a kind of not a forceful manner but through a manner where they may not have fully figured out what they're actually doing is kind of like a a way to guide them on a path that they may actually want to go on to experience it as an individual like a, a non-centered path right but if they weren't presented with those psychedelics or things like that maybe they would never experience 
seeing these gray aliens in a hive mind and think, oh, I actually want to go that way because that's such a creative thing to do. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of, yeah. I don't know. But I, I mean, it's not a bad really, thing or a good I really thing. I believe it's, though that every, everything that everyone does is specifically hmm. for them and their journey, that it's there's uh, there's no wrong and right in the journey either because the whole yeah. wholeness of everything, whether they decide to to stay in the loop, mind loop is what I would call it, um, and keep repeating that even more, go even deeper into that. It's yeah. it's their journey to take, and there's nothing that we can do to stop that. All I see myself as is a a leading by example of what we can create and can tap into, so that others that are interested in leaving the, the, the mind loops and the matrix and the program um, can say, well, at least somebody else is uh, giving it a crack and I can see that, that there is something at the end of that tunnel, uh, a yep. light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, even no matter what, everything is in reflection of us in a whole yes. so if somebody even if it is a powerful person and they're on the negative side and they're trying to trip everyone into doing dmt it literally could end up shooting themselves in the foot with that too because these people are waking up from it right and and it's the same yep. with the movies that are happening you know in the past the energy definitely went on the side of those that were keeping us locked into the logical mind because that was the journey but now yep. it's flipped into the side of bringing in balance and stuff so they're literally shooting themselves in their foot with you know these new movies that they're bringing out that they're probably funded you know like that one that's looking up or whatever i can't even watch it no that's a really good point bobby because i mean yeah. even if you look at the even shooting. if you look at the internet yeah. like if you look at the internet itself like um like i i don't know precisely where it all came from because it's not clear to me exactly but a lot of people allege that it was created by darpa and it was also created uh the early parts of it in terms of an international network were created in a out of a necessity to basically transport CERN data i suppose around the world so that people could analyze it or something like that yeah. and like you look at both of those things and one of them you've basically got probably darpa was envisioning it as a control mechanism or an enemy weapons system or something like that and then you look at CERN and, well, I don't know what's going on with CERN, but I, I think there's something there that they're doing to sort of like entangle energy around the world to they, basically they, manifest they, a reality. Yeah, they, and, they literally had to try to match the energy that was flowing to Earth to wake us up. So every time an energy yeah. came to wake us up, say, into telepathy, they created a device of the mobile phone so it was still outside of us so that we didn't tap into that because we're we're now looking outside ourselves still and that they can control that they can even gain money mm -hmm. from it you know it's a monetary thing as well a power thing yeah. but uh so everything that they've done is matching now what's yeah. happening is we're stepping into learning to yeah. connect as one to oneness right yeah so i mean look at what the internet's brought the whatever it is and and seeking yeah. the so-called but god particle and they're literally stepping into alternate dimensions but when they do that they're coming from the same mind shit so they're only going to step into the another dimension that yeah. has the same yeah. freaking mind shit it doesn't make any difference to yeah. them they haven't yeah. evolved anything or anywhere because they haven't done the work themselves yeah. to begin with and the and, same and, with um the one world order you know it's like it's they're trying to create their own loop of um of god them staying on top of being god yeah. but they are part of god right they are that yeah. as well yeah. and they're prime creator they are so they're only going to keep on with this new energy shooting yeah. themselves in the foot because it's literally here to wake people up and so that's yeah. what's going to the majority i i still believe two-thirds to one-third that's what i was showing will wake up like a baby being born is two thirds to one third of the of the um, placenta going back to Earth. So I I do believe it will. Oh, it's will. wonderful, that right? yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is incredible, though, because the more that we step into living in the moment, the more we can have these knowings that come to us, uh, clarity of knowings that come to us from higher frequencies. I have literally had no schooling. I, I literally, I've done nothing, right? All, all my wisdom has come from them, from them, from me being clear enough to 
learn to live in the moment and I did what they asked me to do you know years and years ago and that was control my mind so that I can laugh, at least feel their presence and what they're trying to tell me that means you're opened up to the Akashic record you're opened up to the benevolent beings you know you can you can get all this all this information you know that that I yeah. know because that they are and that that then takes you to becoming even more and more potential of yourself because then we're opening up more doors to telepathy telekinesis teleportation and not from outside ourselves with devices yes we can do it that way yes we can and we, there's nothing wrong with that as well we can do yeah. that but so long as we realize it all starts off with a balanced mind and that we're coming you know we can do this from within us literally do everything that that's outside of us from within us yeah no there was something interesting you were talking about with the pineal gland and how you were um describing it as sort of like i think it was like a resonant cavity so it's like a shape where inside it um the crystals are kind of, I, I think the way you described it was the crystals are sort of positioning themselves at like nodal points based on the waves of energy that are that are vibrating in it, right? Like it's, that. It's, it's the sound. The sound will create the somatic pattern. So even yep. for benevolent beings to make contact with us to create the crop circle, they use a, a, a sound vibration, a vibration. It might not right. be something that we can hear and it might be something that we could hear. Uh, and I literally did that on another talk where there was two, two balls of light um, swirling and they heard a hum. And I've also done it myself where I wanted to step into another reality. And when I came out of the other reality, I heard outside of me these very angelic voices holding frequency for me to have gone and visited that, that frequency. So it's definitely... You know, just like in the Bible says, the first word is sound. Oh, is it the first word is sound or something like that? Sound. I don't know. I, I, I've heard I'm something not, similar. Not. I know what I know what you're talking about, but I don't know what the exact uh, yeah. the wording is. Yeah, yeah someone yeah. will know. Um, and and so that vibration literally that has that frequency, like the Tibetans chanting, and then they go into these different places and they have these. Uh, beautiful mandalas that they draw up because they can literally see it in their mind's eye and if you take yeah. any sort of dmt or ayahuasca you see these patterns morphing in and out because, right. uh, but it's it, that's why they distorted our sound uh our radio sounds and and all of that they distorted it away from the earth frequency so that we didn't connect back to earth they distorted yeah. everything um so yeah. that we could live in a distorted reality away from our potential but this is all coming back now right because we That's are right. here exploring it and talking about it on like, on zoom you know if, if we didn't have the zoom we probably would already have been stepping into telepathy and being able to visually you know or travel to each other but yeah. this is a stepping stone and we've got to be patient with the transition of this and they've literally supplied the stepping stone for us so this uh, shot themselves in the foot again yeah. by <laughs> by bringing the internet yeah. out and and uh yeah. and thinking that they can control it from the outside but it's yeah. a stepping stone into into more potential for sure like in in terms of vibrating with the earth there was um i saw a good documentary uh i think a few months ago it's probably a two or three maybe it's older but it's a, basically a documentary about earthing mats and basically what the guy did i don't know if you've seen it but the guy basically he had all kinds of back i think it was back problems and he basically he lived in alaska or it, i think it was alaska and he went outside and he, I would not recommend anyone do this necessarily, but he dug a hole and he buried himself in it, but he left his head sticking out and he just slept in there. And he said when he woke up, he felt better. So then he decided, well, I wonder how good these earthing mats are that people put on their beds and stuff. And he bought them and he gave them to all the people in his neighborhood as part of a sort of a, an experiment. And he found that most of the people had some kind of improvement to their chronic illness. I don't think they were all claiming it was fixed, but they had some sort of improvement to their chronic illness. So they, I think they, they, they opened the first hotel where all the beds have earthing mats and all kinds of stuff. And it was, it's pretty, I think it's just called earthing the documentary, but it, but it was just interesting because I, I'd say a lot of people say that it's about kind of like, um, just connecting yourself with the earth, but I wonder how much of it is actually about 
becoming part of a resonant yeah. um, system with the earth. Yeah. And that kind of made me think like, I know that a lot of the earth, like I, I bought an earthing mat at some point and I did notice some improvement, nothing like out of this world, but um, I noticed that quite often they want to put little electric things between the earthing mat and the ground because they claim that it's, uh, if you don't put a resistor there, for example, um, if you were to touch something that caused like a, a neutral wire and the neutral wire was, you might create like a ground loop and then the electricity would flow through you on the bed to, to the earth, which would make you part of the circuit and kill you. So they always want to put resistors in there. And I wonder what effect that would have in terms of changing the connection that you have with the earth, yeah. because now there's something in between that. And anyways, it's kind of a divergent okay. thought, but but it is a, I just like, like it's an earth thing versus just lying in a pit in the ground yeah. like in that case yeah. you're totally surrounded and there's nothing there isolating you but yeah you know, and it, but I'm and sure it's better than nothing when yeah. my daughter was young and she felt quite sick that my my intuition kicked in just take her out to the earth and we just sat outside together um you know on the on the ground yeah. straight on the ground and I'm like you need to be you need to go on the ground on the earth and, yeah, yeah. and I really do think that there, there's a certain frequency. It brings me to uh, cicadas or crickets and that. They, they did a um, video of their sound um, slowed down to the same uh, timeline of a human being living. So here's a cricket well, only last couple of weeks or something. They slowed the, the sound wave that they made, that beautiful, cool sound wave, to a human, and it sounded like choirs singing. It sounded like humans singing. Wow. So yeah. There's just so much more connection to our bodies, to Gaia, to the, to the magic of what we can literally, you know, we all walk around the earth and we don't, we we do all our business in a, in a toilet, right? And it goes yeah. down in one place. But if, if Earth knew exactly what, what kind of, uh, what we needed uh, by yeah. us literally connecting to Earth and d doing all that business on Earth, yeah. Yeah. she would grow the plants that needed us, the minerals that we need too. So there's a whole heap of other you know, we think it's yes. crap, yes. so to speak. Yeah. There's just so much more reasoning why humans, uh, why animals will graze in the grass and shit on their grass. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know why they're giving me this, but this is what's coming. Yeah. No, like even even I'm in that thing documentary, it, I'm laughing at it as I'm speaking, but it's yeah, yeah. It makes sense, yeah. you know. Yeah, well, like um, even even in that earthing documentary, they did experiments where they would put a mat in a cage. With a, with a cat that a cat lived in where it slept and it would always sleep on the earth thing that was what they found kind of deal yeah. right because it's connected but you are I think you're totally right like I think it's like a reciprocal relationship where uh humanity is really I think they're isolating themselves from earth in an extent because they want to prove themselves and kind of like develop all these things but by doing so they're losing that whole relationship where it's it's symbiotic and they're gonna actually get things back like you always hear about how you know um victor schauberger and these other people like they design systems where they mimic nature and they are so much more effective than the systems that are created that don't mimic nature because it's it's working in a similar fashion right yeah. and i mean this is a bit um a bit unrelated, but like I, I follow the work of Catherine Austin Fitz quite often, and uh, she she's basically um, I don't know what you would call her, but uh, she used to work in the government for the housing and in the American government for the housing and urban development department, and uh, she noticed that there was all kinds of what she tried to do was she tried to create a system because she was being presented with an argument from I guess a part of the government that was saying we don't have the fiscal responsibility and the fiscal well-being to actually be able to move forwards as a country. I, I don't want to misrepresent what she said, but this is what I took from it. Yeah. And that we need to find a solution in order to basically balance our books and become a lot more profitable as a country. And she basically decided that top-down control had been the biggest hindrance on the wealth 
of the society because based on what she, I don't know precisely how she calculated it, but I think what she did was she went through business by business and tried to figure out, you know, how much wealth there was in an area and how much more of that wealth could be increased in terms of um, quality of life and, you know, availability to, you know, food, water, heating, nice living, like all those things. And what she found was she found that if you changed and kind of lightened up on the top-down control and you allowed people to properly connect with one another and work, that the wealth could be somewhere from 90 to 95%. Like, like we're talking, I think it was, it was two orders. It was an order of magnitude to 20 times more wealth that could be had in the society. Yeah. And that, and that when she presented this as an option for society, she was basically told, I'm sorry, we've already made a decision. We can't do what you're saying. Yeah, At which point they, they spent 10 years basically trying to destroy her business yeah. and stop her from creating this software that would let the government properly um, designate control to different parts of culture to basically work themselves out and become more economically viable. And what I see is that was how it worked on a societal level, right? Mm -hmm. But going forwards in the next 10 to 20 years, what they're trying to do is they're trying to basically take the same model they applied to society, where they stopped people working with one another, with nature, to basically create an economically viable, uh, beneficial system for everyone. And what they're doing is they're applying it to the human body. So I don't know, I, yeah, like basically what, what I'm getting at is that basically in your body, you have all these cells and they're doing things that we don't really, I don't think we really understand. Like they understand certain elements of them when they take them out of your body and they run different experiments that isolate certain parameters. Um, but like, but as a whole, how they're all working together symbiotically, it's mm -hmm. pretty unclear. Like you find these things where they'll do certain drug tests and they'll find that it has some efficacy, right? Oh, but then when they put two drugs together, the efficacy will be like way more or something like that. That's like unexplainable to them. And it's kind of like what I see them doing is they're going in to control what's happening within the body mm. because they've got a vision of how it will work better doing it that way. But in doing that, they're actually going to cause a scarcity within the body system mm. because they haven't seen the whole picture of how it really works because yeah. they aren't looking at it on that higher level where they're actually seeing how all these things connect on an energetic type basis. Yeah. Yeah. And by, by using this reductionist mentality on the body and how it works in an attempt to optimize it and make it better, they're actually going to cause more problems, more problems and yeah. scarcity, which is what's going to cause humanity to basically start degrading yeah. in a very, in a very, like for a certain, for the portion who don't realize that's what's happening. Yeah, like it will be coming from a logical, logical point of view only. And they're not bringing in that, that energy, spiritual kind of connection either. So yeah, when they, yeah. when they can, when they connect with somebody and they say, from a logical point of view, if we put this in you, then that's going to do this, this, but they don't know what all the other parts that you're talking about are going, are going to be reacted to. It's literally, yeah. it's lit that they're doing it so that they have more control again, right? Because then they've got yeah. something yeah. that they can say, well, we can flick a switch here and control this. Uh, and that means that that person's safe <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or yeah. not because we're in control. They're literally coming from their own lack of themselves yeah. to create this. Um, you yeah. can't create something of benefit to anyone when you're coming from your own lack yourself. It literally yeah. stuffs everything up. So this is more to do with that's they're trying to combat what's really what's really taking place is human consciousness evolving into something way bigger than them. Um, and they they lose their position in that respect. So if they can try to through the money game, uh, money war, paper war, whatever game control of of people's bodies then they can uh still be in charge yeah, yeah. uh it's gonna shoot them in the foot because um those people those people that are like that are gonna be almost 
client like a client like a they're not going to have any sort of flaws within themselves and yeah. what does nature do to be able to evolve it has massive amount of flaws and and it's us humans that yeah. accept yeah. our flaws as our learnings of stepping into something brand new more and more and more and more and more excitement that creates us into something better that yeah that's where we've yeah. got to go. Like you're talking about before that pyramid scheme, right? Where, yeah, yeah. well, if I'm at the top of the pyramid and I control all of that, and she was probably trying to flatten that pyramid scheme so that everybody's yeah. working together in harmony, just like our body does. Our body yep. literally yep. knows automatically yeah. how to work in harmony with itself through the immune system, through um, how we breathe even, how you know what we put in our minds, how we think and all that. Yeah. It's all yeah. part of one huge, beautiful yep. story. Um, but when you have one controlled factor uh, trying to control all, so say, so for instance, we had microchips put in our body, which wants to control everything, wants to control our immune, wants to control our yeah. thoughts, wants to control. And that's directed by somebody who's coming from lack themselves. You can switch your yep. flick a yeah. switch. Yeah. Hello, yeah. You, you're yeah. It's, it's you're not you're either going to be in this no man's land of not being able to evolve through being a soul anymore because you're stuck in their limitational world uh which everything can be created out of it but it would be yeah. a lot more difficult let's put it that way um because i don't believe there's ever a cap on absolutely everything or, like, or you, yeah you lose you lose your your whole ability to grow you just die like you, you yeah. just won't, your like, soul won't be able to handle it anymore what does the soul do yeah. when it can't handle something it leaves yeah. <laughs> and when, like, what happens when it wants to leave it creates disease it create it literally drives you into a bus it creates a, an accident in your reality because it yeah. doesn't want to be here anymore so yeah it's going to be it's an interesting game what they're trying to do but they won't they're, they're literally like, fighting against uh, source energy, love. Yeah, no, exactly. So I gotta, I gotta say something now. I hope it's not too divergent from what we're talking about. But basically, um, I was watching a video where they were talking about. They were basically trying to convince people that they didn't have free will, and science loves to do this. And it's like they can make a material, rational argument that people don't have free will because they're operating from within a framework that doesn't allow for it to begin with. And there was a video I saw recently that was quite interesting. And I'm gonna to try to find the guy's name. Um, let's see if I can find it. It may not have been on this channel. Um, anyway, basically what the guy said was he said that this was from, I think it was from the Aubrey Marcus guy's channel, but basically- we can put the it link wasn't... underneath this too, so. Yeah, yeah, I can try to find it. Um, but basically what the guy said was he said that they can make the argument that there's no free will in this plane, but where the free will is actually coming from is those higher dimensions. And they come through that sort of the point of, I don't know, I, I really don't know what it is, but I wanna say it's like almost like this coherent singularity and it's how we interact with that, perhaps even in our pineal gland or within the core of our cells that are all connected to one another. Mm -hmm. And that's what's giving it the free will. The free will is in effect, like, like you can find a lot of good information about how randomness really isn't real. So um, there were, oh, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, but there was a, for example, like the nuclear decay rate, of atoms is quite often used as like the tight and true standard for what a random process is. So like how quickly it decays is a random process because nothing allegedly influences the nuclear decay rate. But actually these, they call them cold neutrinos. So basically a typical neutrino is a relativistic particle, which means it's, 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 I guess it's traveling at a, at the speed of light or near the speed of light. It has no mass and no charge, but they have these other things which they call relativistic, uh, not, uh, relic neutrinos, which are in, in essence, as far as I can tell, 
they're completely denied by mainstream science on one level, but on another level, there's been a lot of work done by the Russians, um, specifically Alexander Parkhamov uh, made a book in Russian, which uh, Bob Greenier from the MFMP translated, which is called Space Earth Human, which I think is on Amazon. And he talks about how the, um, the nuclear decay rate can actually be influenced by concentrating this energy, which he calls relic neutrinos, by using, for example, a metal dish, which reflects it onto um, the element. I think, yeah, he reflects it onto an element. The, the experiment's a little more complicated because he wants to remove normal cosmic radiation as a source for, um, for radioactive decay. But anyways, what he finds is he finds that if he concentrates these um, relic neutrinos onto the, uh, the, the nuclear isotope, the, the radio radioactive decay will change. So based on like the season of the year, the radioactive decay will change. And, um, and that is really- makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, so what, what I'm trying to, what my general thing I'm getting at is that they claim that these random processes are truly random, but in reality, it's far more nuanced. And there are these kind of higher energies that we don't even really acknowledge exist on so many levels, but some people have gone out of their way to prove they exist. And they've managed to show that they, they do change these biological. So, so that was an example where it changes the radioactive decay rate, but there's another guy, which just give me a moment to try to find it. Um, oh my dear, I've got so many books. Yeah, so the name of the book is Cosmological Factors in Stochastic Processes. I'll give, a, I'll, I'll give a link to it, but it's by Simon E. Schnoll. And basically he spent, I think it was like 20 years researching the effects of cosmic radiation and other things on random biological processes. So this is like how your body, like certain, I, I guess I didn't, I haven't actually read the whole book because I haven't had time because it's a long one. But um, from the part that I did read, I got the impression that he was getting at the fact that basically the way your body will assemble, uh, I, I don't know if they're called enzymes or what they would be, but basically the chemical constituents in your body that kind of regulate how your body functions are really heavily influenced by not just the moon, but by the stars and how everything lines up. And these kind of energetic factors that no one is really willing to acknowledge. And it's kind of like, if you aren't willing to acknowledge those, those things, and you're just throwing all of them out, how can you build a framework which says that people don't have free will? Yeah, right. Like, like you say, how can you come to that conclusion when you're throwing so much evidence out? So anyway, so where I was kind of going to go with this one kind of tangent is that, um, like, I really feel like they don't want the free will because they've kind of decided that they're not worthy of it. Because if you if you look at what's happening with the technological stuff, um, there's another YouTuber I follow sometimes called Lex Friedman. And he interviews, he interviews a lot of people who are involved in kind of what I would call um, sort of technocracy or the basically the transhumanism kind of agenda. And he's kind of coming at it from a sort of a neutral slash pro slash cautious standpoint. So he really gets some real good people on there to give you an idea of where they're going with this stuff. And one of the guests he had on was basically someone who was going to make a neural wearable that was going to basically use lasers to measure blood flow in parts of your brain. And everyone would have these helmets they could put on and they were going to get it down as cheap as they could. And what his basically end goal was, he stated this, it was that basically he wanted to provide a system to people. I, 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 may, I hope I'm not misrepresenting him, but it was he wanted to provide a system to people where they could basically take all the biological factors from their body and use them to make the best decision for their body without needing to use their mind. Because using their mind would be influenced by their emotions, which might cause them to make bad decisions. And he even went on quite a long discussion about how in his life he had been tormented by sort of emotional issues and that this had caused him 
to basically be driven to the precipice of sort of self-destruction almost. And that and that if that's the mentality that they're coming at this okay, from, yeah. so they, they actually want to build these systems to kind of take off the mind. burden. Yeah, take the burden off of needing to deal with those emotions. The mind. So they, they're yeah. literally saying, well, if if we can create this that bypasses your mind and what your mind yeah. is influencing your body, then we can keep you healthy, right? But yes. there's no evolution of the soul and there's no expansion of, of where we're yep. really going as a soul. It's because it's you're now the reason why your mind is what it is and, and how and why we have to deal with these emotions and that was the actual training wheels of the bike. So what you've done by bypassing the mind, they're telling me now is you've literally taken off all the wheels. You're literally taking yeah. off everything and and you're just on this front they look they're showing me a frame of a bike just sitting there and 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 that's it that's what you'll be you'll be in this body but you won't be uh evolving and that's the whole point of yes. the soul coming to earth is to go through all these beautiful emotions and start learning to accept them as part of the of who you are as a magnificent person as a magnificent being so that you can explore more and more and more yeah um the like this is the yeah like this is the test of our era right like people always talk about how um the atlantean era was i think that i think this is from uh who's the who's the fellow's name um early 1900s um, yeah. So um, they always talk about how Rudolf Steiner basically broke them into eras, and he said that the era of Atlantis was, I think they were developing their memory or something like that. But anyways, the era we're in now is the development of the mind, right? And it's kind of like you were talking about that left-right hemisphere thing and how in Atlantis, they really were going wild with the creative side. And now we've been thrown into the other hemisphere of our mind and we're dealing with the, the rational side. And it's kind of like the challenge, like you've said, is to kind of bring those two together and figure out how to integrate them and then and move forwards. And it's kind of like, if you've got a group of people who are hyper-rationalists and base everything in the mind, but at the same time, they're making devices to remove their mind, their emotions, from the decision making process it's like i don't want to bash on them too much because i think they're well intentioned but it's like it's it's like you're you're projecting your lack of trust on yourself yes. into the reality around you yeah and it's like you're not really dealing with the thing that you're supposed to be overcoming which is this integration of it yes. all right yeah so and that's, and that's it. You can't step into the pineal gland anyway until you have a balanced mind. So if they're bypassing a balanced mind and stepping into the pine, they, it won't allow them. It just simply would not yeah. allow them because it it's, goes as a symbiotic thing. Uh, clarity of self, clarity of self and knowing and accepting all as love opens the pineal gland so if they're coming from a point of well we're bypassing the pineal gland so now we've got a healthy body but mine's still shit you know mine's still really yeah. crappy because it will be they, how can they stop that i mean unless they become nothing like literally that is how we, how we work through this limited re reality and how everything is separated uh, how I can touch the computer, right, is from our mind, our logical mind. So if you take that away, you take away uh, our ability to be in a material world because yeah. then you're in an etheric world. So you, you're, you're more uh, autistic. You'll turn autistic if you take the logical mind away. You right. can't bypass something that is of lessons for humanity's growth and evolution, that it's, right. it's never going to work. It will always backfire. And um, yeah. and it's made that way specifically so that we go down the right path of, of this training ground. This, this yeah. world is a training ground to be able yeah. to come into something brand new. But the cool thing is once we do that and the inspiration that comes from that is the, what we can literally create is so magnificent. 
and bringing in like you you've got all the scientific knowledge in that that, that information uh, here i am with the es esoteric stuff and then we bring it together and we go what can we create we can create you know the, even these yeah. cats are amazing because uh, entwining something so so beautifully harmonically and both coming from love and both accept yeah. of each other so yeah, like, that's one thing i often hear online is that we are in like a training ground for our soul and that ultimately once you i guess some people would say the solar system is a training ground and i guess like rudolf steiner they talk about sort of seven phases of humanity and i guess we're in the the fifth phase now or the fourth phase and it's like you know there's you know it's like there's the new jupiter and then after the new jupiter there's the i don't know what it is there's vulcan and there's something else that they talk about but it's kind of like once you once you complete that sort of that training ground of humanity you are then given or you've earned the the ability to kind of create things because you've realized what what the responsibilities are of creating things yeah and that and how to create is coming from love yes because I, I like them yeah in one of your articles yeah, yeah whether it's logic or you know outside ourselves or within it's coming from love it's when it's yeah. coming from fear and that's where yes. i have a problem where yeah. that's keeping us in the limited uh state of awareness that is the limit uh, like perhaps the, soul, the soul once it hits fear it's hitting a boundary of itself not wanting to go any further and then procrastination fits comes in i don't want to go any further with this i'm staying i'm staying in this little bubble over here because you're afraid right fear is the boundary of the soul not wanting to split itself any further away from source love oneness of itself yeah. um and so the more that um, the powers to be flip us into fear, the more that humanity is, is feeling that separated pull. But the great thing is when you pull rubber band really tight like that, when you let it go, it just goes flying the other side and you end up seeing all these juicy, awesome, wonderful things because, oh my God, I've had enough. And that's where the tower moments come in, in people's lives where everything crumbles around them. And then they go, now what? Well, I tried that and I thought that was the right path. And now it's crumbled right in front of me and all those people are left and I have nothing. Fuck, I might as well die. Well, if I might as well die, so you get to that point of I might as well die. Um, well, why don't I try just following the path of my soul and my intuition and love? Well, let's give that a shot, yeah. you know? And it, yep. it boomerangs you into acceptance of something totally different than what you have been programmed to believe was your limitation. Yeah. So that yep. we end up becoming way more. I, and I, yeah, I love, was, I love that stuff. And there was a guy, and this is probably going to, I'm going to throw this into the mix because I like throwing things into the mix too. There was this guy that created what's called the God Helmet. Have you heard of that one? I have okay. not. No. So the God Helmet was, uh, this is something that Spirit led to me 10 years ago. Like the God Helmet was, had little magnet, magnets all on it. And when he put this helmet with all these magnets on it, on somebody they would literally flip into another reality and i yeah. believe that there's magnetized positions on earth and i know Illaru is one of them where there's these portholes what you're really magnetizing uh places that you can literally put your forehead on and 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 it flips you into different experiences as well so mm -hmm. yeah that you should look up the god helmet it's really I interesting. Will yeah I will, I will look that up yeah think about that one but that was another really? another piece of the puzzle they led me to and i don't know they keep bringing it into my head so i'm going with that one <laughs> there, there were there were two things i that have just come to me now that um i wanted to mention <laughs> uh one was related to something you said which kind of ties back into what i was saying earlier and then there's something that related to what you just said now so the, the first thing was what you what we were talking about earlier was in one of your articles you basically said um i think it was on your website you were talking about how the responsibility of creation, because everything you create, you ultimately will need to experience, or you need to be, or something like that. It was it was kind of like the karma thing, but the way you worded it, I found was much um, 
much more insightful, but I, I don't have the words exactly in front of me right now. I think it was one of your articles in the last month. And honestly, um, I probably couldn't repeat it because it was too yeah. information. Right, yeah. I, mean, I, have, okay. I have spirit with me now and like we're having, we're not just doing a two-way conversation. That's okay, oh, okay, okay. Us at the moment. Okay, um, well, if, yeah. if, anyways, if, anyone, if anyone's interested to know the Definitely, specific wording, yeah. I can put it in the comments. Yeah, Yeah, because whatever yeah. you whatever you do create, there is yeah. a karmic responsibility to your creation. Yeah. And you have to follow thing? through. You have to yeah. follow through with that creation. So you can't, if, if you create something um, in this world, say you created a, a cloned animal that had a, that, you know, could reside, a soul could reside in, and, it, and the experience of that clone animal was not a very nice position for it to be in for that soul, then your next life, you you're literally somehow down the line, because we're all oneness, right, we're, we're all joined and linked in that way, you're going to be freshly experiencing what your creation is in another life. So just be aware of, of the creations that you're creating that you want to experience them, that it's here for, from love for all, because why would you want to, you know, create something outside of yourself that you, that's going to put you in a position that doesn't give you anything other than pain? Yeah, yeah it's true. And then the other point was related to the, the God helmet you were talking about. I saw um, a really interesting video. It wasn't really interesting. It was pretty interesting. There's a part of it that I found really interesting about it was another one of these wearables you put on your head. But this one was about um, basically putting you in an alpha state or um, I don't think they did theta. I think they were mainly, it was alpha or beta they were going for. And it was to help you either concentrate or relax. And they have many different devices that do this. And I, as far as I understand it, the more sort of um, the up until now accepted methodology to do this was to use relatively strong magnetic fields to influence the brain waves. But what these guys were doing in this other group, which they actually sell a product, which if anyone's interested in, I can you know find details about the video that I watched and put it in the comments. But basically what they found was that they could use really subtle magnetic waves to actually change your brain state to, I think it was beta or alpha. And, um, and it was really interesting because what they were basing the, their research on was the fact that your body is kind of like a coherent energy field, very similar to the ball lightning stuff type stuff we talked about at the beginning of the call, mm. but that it's not, it's not like a ball lightning is a very extreme thing that's happening because the, the energy traveling around it as far as I understand it, it's traveling at like the third the speed of light. And it like ionizes all the particles around it and it can extract energy from the environment and basically perform sort of nuclear reactions in it. Whereas when you have this sort of more subtle field around your body, which I think may even be what some people are calling as an aura, um, that is also in a sense, a coherent field. And what they were doing is they were using these um, magnetic resonating fields coming from, I think they were from several different places to change your brain state to alpha or beta. But what I found most interesting about the device and the study, they did a study on the efficacy. And in the study, they had three groups of people. And I think if I remember correctly, it was basically to try to do like a, 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 a blind study where basically the people who were actually wearing the device, one group had the device turned off one group had the device turned on and one group were told that it was on when it wasn't on or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then they were bombarded with this stuff. And what the result was that the people who didn't know, it, it was kind of, I, I don't want to butcher it because I don't actually remember what it was, but what the result I, what I took away from it was, was that the efficacy of the basically people messing with your brain waves using, using, um, magnetic fields was that if you weren't aware it was happening, you wouldn't be affected. If you thought something was happening, but you didn't know how it was working, then you would be affected. And if you didn't believe that it worked to begin with, and they told you it was on, it would also not be effective. So it's almost like in order for these sort of mind control techniques to actually work on people, 
They can't be oblivious to their existence. They need to believe they're possible and they exist, but they also need to believe that they actually work. Because if you don't believe that they work, like I, I don't like I, I, I'm not arguing yeah. that you can't fry someone's brains with microwaves because obviously you can do that or something like that. But it's like in terms of the subtle energy, I think your body aura actually as a as a coherent field can protect you yes. and being aware of it, but not believing that you need to be victim to it is yeah. sufficient for your body to be able to sort of extract energy from wherever it gets it from, from source to wherever it's coming from, and bolster your aura to protect you in a way from this stuff. Yes. And that actually being able to realize that is a possibility as opposed to believing, oh my God, they're putting satellites up. They're going to start bombarding me with all these yeah. radio waves, which are going to interfere. And the interference of those fields is what's going to create these magnetic effects, I think which is what will start basically draining your aura in a way. It's basically a constant assault on that coherent field around your body, which needs to constantly be rebuilding itself from somewhere. Yeah, but then we, yeah. we have the ability to be able to protect yes. us from everything that comes at us because we are magnificent beings and we can heal yeah. anything that we want to really heal when we step into that one essence, which is love for ourselves. So it, yeah. whatever they, I mean, whatever they throw at us, and I have had this thought as well, there is another thought, you know, whatever they throw at us uh, is our belief system that actually creates the problem itself too. And so we have to be careful with what our belief systems are and what we're actually putting our energy into. That always keep bringing me back to the saying, there's one movie, I think it was Merlin, where he's facing the, the evilest, Blumen, I don't know, Lady of the Lake or some evil dude, lady person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and she yeah. was just so powerful. But when he faced her, he just went, I'm just not giving you any more power anymore. And he just turned around and walked off and she's gone off because she now has nothing to fight that, that you know, have that resistance to create the problem in the first place. Yep. And it's yep. like when you push on something, as soon as you push on it, it resists back. But if you just let go, it falls over. And so when we when we turn, I've constantly been told by my guides, when we turn our back to what they're doing and we start creating, we start focusing on what we're creating, we create that so much faster than what they could ever keep up with us if we were uh, resisting them and fueling their agendas into what they, you know, the next fear game that they're going to bring up. And maybe all of these these games that they're bringing up have no fruition whatsoever. They just keep on pumping the same stories yeah. out there so that they don't get karmic backlash. But it's uh, the reason why they don't get yep. so much karmic backlash is because it's actually empty noise. It's not actually got any pull to whatever yeah. they're trying to manipulate people's minds with other than yeah. people, people feeding into it and saying that it is yeah. for real. Yeah, it's like, honestly, like if, if, if they really had the technology that they had, that they think that they keep telling us that they have in all these movies and all this stuff, they keep insinuating that it's there. And they, they actually believe that we were as powerless as they want us to believe we are. They would have already done what they wanted to do or yeah. what they, what we think they want to do. I don't want to even say that it's what they want to do because I, I'm not really sure where to draw that line yeah. between what is me projecting on other people what I think it is that's yeah. going on versus what is going on inside me kind of deal. Like, you yeah, know, so it's, it's tricky. Through this whole game, I've really just kept central within myself, keep bringing it back to myself. If I got food yeah. in the cupboards, if I, if I got shelter, have I got, you know, am I, can I be happy if I got something to, you know, keep my mind occupied? Am I, am I going towards yeah. happy stuff? And nothing in my immediate reality has shifted. I literally have ridden this two years with hardly any shift, any change that, that, that they've not infiltrated me at all um, with any of their games. And I, I really believe that we can literally keep uh, our, our own sovereign bubble of creating what we desire and what we're going to magnetize to ourselves, um, create a, a whole new reality. 
So, but, but I've not fed into, I don't have a TV. I don't, you know, I watch what I want. I don't, if I do post anything on Facebook that might be a negative, so-called negative, I always check in with myself. Am I doing this from love? I didn't yeah. in the past, but I do now. Um, and that's made a big difference. So as soon as I feel like, even if I have posted something and I feel that I wasn't in the right place, I'll take it down. I'll just go, you know what, it just energetically, I wasn't in the right place to have said that. Um, mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if it's the truth or not. And I believe it's the truth logically. I still take it down if it feels wrong because mm -hmm. I don't want to gift them any more energy than what they're already uh, programming other people to give them. They're literally programming people to give them something to fight them on so that they can fuel their their agendas yeah i couldn't agree more yeah no, i think you're absolutely right um trying to find something here here it is no so the um the thing i was talking earlier about the guy who made the wearable to kind of do the the brain waves to um not the, brain waves, the, the magnetic waves to influence your state of consciousness his research was based on another fellow who was an Italian who actually worked with Luc Montagnier, who was related to the HIV thing and all that stuff. But, um, but basically what they went on to work on, which has been totally discounted by the scientific community as being totally invalid, which is kind of a bit strange that you would have, you know, the father of, or not the father, the young, um, one of the key people involved in the isolation of HIV and all that stuff. Um, basically now pulling a, as far as I'm concerned, a total 180. And basically what he went on to work on was basically subtle energy in water and how you could use coherent lasers and coherent magnetic fields to cause the self-assembly of biological stuff in water so for example you could take i think i, I don't want to misrepresent it misrepresent it so i can uh, i can provide the papers for if people are interested in reading them links to them later but basically what i believe he did was he took one test tube with a sample uh some sort of dna sample in it in one place he had another test tube somewhere else he had two coils, electromagnetic coils set up next to each of them. He put all of the precursors to DNA, all of the elements that you would need in the solution, but no DNA itself in the, in the one solution. And then he turned on these coils and he basically noticed that after 12 hours or so, I think it was something like that, the DNA had self-assembled in the other test tube mm. that was the same DNA as in the first one. And they did a lot of studies and what they actually found was that in order to get it to self-assemble, you had to do something similar to what they do in homeopathy, which is you need to really dilute the first sample with the DNA in it. And what I found interesting about that is because the more you dilute it, eventually you get to the point where there's either one or there's none of what you started, started with in there. And I, I, I don't know how much of it is related to the water containing the information about the DNA, but versus the actual DNA there by itself, but it's almost like you need to have a singular voice that's unified, that isn't competing with other voices in order to be able to transfer that information into mm -hmm. the new thing, which I really goes back to that whole thing about sort of like, if you have a group of people who are all unified on a single thought, or a single mission, mm -hmm. it can be so much more powerful yeah. than having even two. So it's like if you have if you have 10 people who are all totally connected on something, it's so much better than having nine people and one person who's not, right? Mm -hmm. And and yeah. and this kind of feeds into my kind of under I don't know if it's an understanding, but it's kind of like this feeling I've got about humanity, which is that like if we are all going to sort of transmute this energy into something different and really like go up to a different place, whatever is going to happen is going to happen at the same time because everything really, I feel like it needs to be coherent. And it's kind of like, like it doesn't necessarily mean that we yeah. all need to go the same way, but in whatever way we're going, we all need to be 
in agreement because it's kind of like I feel like and that, that's what happens when we start to raise our vibration more and more we start to see the synchronicities of people being on the same page coming from love it literally is like going up on a chess board a checkerboard that gets smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes to the top which is source itself um just love uh so yeah. we, we when we raise our vibration we start having these synchronistic events happening where we can we start to meet at certain places and and without even trying yeah. you know it's just like well I have a certain vibration that I want to create this uh talk and now I have you know you're in my reality where you're representing the other part that I that that was in the same frequency as me to want to do the talk you know what I mean yeah um, yeah and so all these synchronicities start to occur and and we look it's I've noticed it when I've gone on to tarot card readings right which you have pick a card readings on the internet um every card that I've picked everything that I've picked has said exactly where I wanted to go and I'm like that's because I'm in this flow of energy and they are representing that coming back at me saying yes that's going to happen because you're yeah. in that flow of energy um and so they're, they're doing these pick a card readings where they're going geez yeah. the same card keeps flicking out for both for all of the piles you know <laughs> what is happening yeah. We're literally shifting our vibration into syncing up together so that we can create something better um, from that synchronization from, from yeah. love. And it comes from self-support. It literally comes from us loving who we are. That's, that's yeah. one of the biggest keys to synchronizing up with other people who are loving who they are, that we can uh, be, be in the same place of wanting to create yeah. the same magic um and we each hold a piece of the key so we're still individual people but like, we just I, I really think you've you nailed it when you said synchronicities um because i think synchronicities and coincidences are the mechanism or the the way which the higher kind of stuff the higher the higher energies the higher planes you can't see they're the way they actually make change like that's the that's the part where we were talking earlier about how i was saying there were um all of these sort of biological processes and nuclear decay and they're all influenced by these energies that people really don't want to acknowledge exist it's kind of like the same thing it's like these random events synchronicities coincidences are what actually they're how the spirit and the soul is kind of like making change mm. um through either through us into our reality or through the internet connect the, the, the interconnectedness of everything. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like I, I I find it really interesting because it's like quite often computers have they, there are random number generators in them, which they use for as part of the algorithms to make decisions for different things. Like, you know, you know, whatever video YouTube's suggesting to me, I I I don't know if there's a random element to it, but I assume at some point in that algorithm which is trying to decide which of these thousand videos that they've already curated as the best videos that they want to show me based on whatever their agenda is and whatever they will they think i'm willing to actually take in there's some random element about which of those thousand they're going to choose 10 videos from and i think that those random events are where the spirit gets in so it's almost like that ghost in the machine expression from you know that they use from ghost in yeah. the shell or something it's like i really do think that the, the, you, but well, the, you are you yeah. are what you seek in the end whatever you're yeah. seeking you will find so if you're seeking that's why they always told me empty your mind see a blank canvas and and that's why even an avatar they say your cup is too full because you're always you're always going to find what you are seeking to begin with so Maybe it's good that they chose me because I really didn't have a lot in my head about all of this stuff to begin with. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then I just trusted that I was going to be shown the potential of humanity. And that's where, where it led me just straight mm -hmm. to the sources of potential of humanity rather than me trying to seek something. And as a scientist, you know, we're, 
that even they will always find they'll trip up over some methodology or something that works for them. And then somebody else will say, well, it's not working for me. It's never a hundred percent. Why? Because that person didn't yeah. fall into believing that medicine would work for them. Not fully, you know, um, yeah. so we're always, we're always going to manifest what we are seeking. So the best yeah. Yeah. that they say now and uh, the energy that's happening right now is to let go because we're only coming from projected mindset from a logical mind, which could only go round and round in circles in our yep. past anyway. Um, we've got to let go of that past to be able to step into literally, and you'll see this in a lot of spiritual movies and that, jump off a cliff into the yep. unknown and create as we go in the moment of what our heart's desires are. We literally don't know where this is going to take us. And that is the, the true magic of it all because it's yep. open, it, it opens up way more possibilities for us as well because we're not caught in the mind loop of projecting yeah. what we've been taught in the past anymore yeah. it's kind of like the, the the butterfly effect like it's like you have someone who does some scientific experiment that proves something that's outrageously awesome that would be like revolutionary and would change everything like i, I can't think of anything exactly but like i think there was some lady in japan who made these things called IPS cells or something like 15, like it was like five years ago and there was a whole hula about how, oh no, she had just made these cells, but they couldn't actually be used as stem cells. Because what she was doing, I think she was making stem cells from normal cells or something like that. And I'm probably misrepresenting this to some degree, but, but basically what happened was she did this. And then after 10 more people came out and they said, oh no, 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 she's totally wrong. And they redid the experiment and it didn't work. And for them, they didn't get that result. So then they managed to prove that whatever they were doing was this giant scam. And they, they I don't know how deep, I, I don't know how yeah, deep they got in terms of saying it was no mindset of yes. trying to discredit this. But, yeah. but the thing is, right, like if you go to chaos theory and you, you think about that thing they say where they talk about a butterfly flapping its wings on one side of the planet can cause a tornado on the other side, right? It's like, if you're willing to make that much of an acknowledgement that's such a small seemingly insignificant event can have such a devastating repercussion then or, or such an awesome repercussion then how could you not acknowledge that maybe some cosmic energy or some mental because according to what i've researched people can actually emit these coherent energy fields from their mind like it actually like this this equivalent to cold neutrino energy will actually come out of people's minds as well and that's how spoon benders can bend spoons and things like that allegedly but if, if people are able to emit this energy out which can cause these subtle effects mm. on biological systems for example then it's pretty obvious to me that even even if you don't need to say that it's these subtle effects on biological systems you could just say that oh the person was in the state of mind that they didn't think the experiment was going to work so maybe the timing within, within which they put things in was actually enough to cause them to make a cascading set of repercussions that caused their replication of the experiment to fail yeah. you know what i mean yeah and it's like that, i that think yeah that yeah and it's like you can these coincidences can stack up in ways that normal people would say that's impossible but i think based on my experience at least I've seen stacked coincidences that were impossible happen. Yeah. And it's, I think that's how this energy works. Like yeah. we were I was saying before. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. So it's, it's really your state of mind it is. bringing in it's that in type of alignment. In the end, yeah. it is. And we're going to have to wrap this up because it's like two hours. Yeah. But sorry. Um, yeah. 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 No, I don't say sorry. It's been amazing. But, um, but just what you just to recap that, you know, to end it off, like we literally, if we see it that way, then we can literally create whatever we want through our, our magnificence of realizing there's multiple possibilities. It's not, it's not as limited as what we're, our logical brain can handle. There's just way more when we start tapping into our intuition and mm -hmm. our imagination again, because that's, a va that's an unended vastness. The limit is the imagination. And so we can create whatever we really, truly do wish. 
Um, but but we have to have both of our logical mind and our uh, intuition saying yes to it, um, yep. which means that the whole of us is an acceptance of that reality coming to fruition. And that's the collaboration that we're talking about, you know, yep. as, yep. as such. Okay, I'll say, we'll say goodbye. Yeah, and if, if anyone has any Stay questions on. about anything cool. I've said, at least, uh, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll try to provide links to the documents. We could even do this live, like then you can go along as long as you like live <laughs> because it's not, I don't have to re rehash it and put it up, you know what I mean? But oh, we'll see anyway how we go. I will say goodbye and uh, till next time. Thanks, yeah. Peter. No problem, Bobby. Thanks. Bye.